Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Katie, and I'm joined by Bonnie, Leah, and Lisa talking about our one cool science thing. Bonnie already talked about Alice Ball, but before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gal pals. My question for you guys is, would you donate your body to science when you die? Dun, dun, dun. Who's going first? I'll go first. Okay, okay. go for it. Yes. I mean, why not? I'm done with mm-hmm. it. <laughs> there you go. That's and, fair. You know, but if there are parts of the people who are living could use, but you know. Yeah. Kind of a mix up. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of donating it to science yeah. maybe. there you go see exactly Whatever. Bonnie you seem very excited what is your yeah. answer <laughs> uh, yeah like I'm not using it anymore see? like um, I I would be interested in donating it to you know I, I am an organ donor Yeah, I have a little heart on my thing Sweet. Um, I would be interested in donating to science um, maybe not so much the body farm Oh that yeah, was a little creepy. Yeah, I was getting a little close to the line. Gotcha. Like I get how it's necessary, but that's a little right. close. That's the little asterisk, basically, Maybe. on your will of like any place except uh, for that part. Well, it's just <laughs> useful. I don't know. Right. Uh, but I'd really like to, you know, whatever's left over to do the forget what they're calling them now, like green burials. Oh Where yeah. You pretty much just put in like you become a, a tree? linen sack yes. and just buried oh, and yeah. left to like naturally decompose. Yes. Like I don't want any of this embalming. Uh, shit or right. like coffin like the yeah. double airtight coffins that just explode yeah because the bacteria in your body breaks down and explode it really it's chemistry. gas and then explodes the coffin and right. makes a nasty mess yeah I no, mean, fair usually the funeral Gross. director cracks it <laughs> they, they, they upsell you the airtight coffin and then they crack it before they bury it oh. really people are you kidding me interesting uh, <laughs> done <laughs> I've been like back and forth on this because like um, for the for the longest time I I wasn't an organ donor and I wanted um, I wanted to make sure my spirit was intact when I went and I'm Buddhist and so it's uh, it's usually you know a cremation of some mm. type is the ceremony but I kept thinking I'm like no uh, I need my my soul to be able to be all together so that I can be you know reincarnated because that's my glorious belief and then. I thought, A, you know, I could be very well wrong about this. (laughs) So if my uh, if my organs can be of better use to someone else, A, that's a form of reincarnation where I wasn't wrong (laughs) Mm -hmm. because my organs are now going into somebody else to have a new use and a new life of their own sort of thing. Um, It's not like my liver is going to start talking to somebody else. But, you know, anyway, so then I so I just kind of like my my thinking kind of evolved because at first I think it was just kind of like out of fear of like, no, this is mine. I want it all with me. And then it's like, I don't need any of this. Does somebody else need some of this? And so. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So even when I like uh, renewed my driver's license out of habit, I said, no, I'm not an organ donor. But then my daughter just got her driver's permit and we were talking about organ donation Mm because she wants to be a doctor. And um, she was talking about how important it is and how life saving it is. And I'm just like, you know what? You convinced me. So I'm going to go and change my driver's license for the first time in my adult life to be an organ donor. Um, I also love that the linen burial that Mm -hmm. they're doing now. Like the first time I started seeing that those were making a comeback, I'm like, oh, sign me up. Then I believe within the same time frame, I found where they can uh, cremate you and turn you into a tree. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I want to be a tree. (laughs) There's so many cool things they can do. There's the tree thing. Yeah. There's the coral reef thing. What's the coral reef thing? They they basically take your ashes and mix it in with cement and use it uh, as... Oh, like, like a, a basis base. for a coral reef. Oh, like, nice! And then you get a, your like descendants get a map of which, which reef oh, you are. That's cool. Or, like they can turn you yeah. into a, a, an artificial diamond, or oh, that's right, like, the diamond is another one. Yeah. yeah. Or there's one where you can do. Uh, it get mi- gets mixed in with vinyl and you become a record, or Ooh. like all kinds of stuff. Right. Maybe maybe Ooh. one of each. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would like a little bit to be a tree, a little bit to be a diamond, a little bit like to my to my daughter, I will this, and then to my, you know. How many lives do you have? I know. <laughs> I'm planning on reincarnating many times, so maybe. <laughs> so I'm writing this down for the long. No, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it's I I think it's really cool. But I think the the emphasis of the you know um, can science use for better good? I think it's totally yeah. worth it. So. Yeah, I've got. What about Katie? What about you? What about you? Well, you guys, you know so much about it. I'm wondering, have you guys read um, "Smoke Gets in Your Eyes"? No. No. Oh, it's good. I think I was like two or three chapters from totally finishing it, which is a crime. I need to finish it. Um, But it's written by Caitlin Daughtry. Gotcha. Okay. Daughtry. I know. Yeah. Caitlin. (laughs) Caitlin. (laughs) It's written by Caitlin. (laughs) Bonnie, I'm following up with you and we're both like so timid about pronouncing things. We're like, (laughs) I think I know what I'm saying. (laughs) And yet we've never got yelled at once for our terrible pronunciation. Right. (laughs) Um, But she worked at a funeral home um, and she actually runs a service called kind of educating people about mm. what your rights are with death like people oh. think they don't have any rights to a family member's body um they think that you know the government just is like no to everything but it's not true oh. so it's just a really well-written interesting book gotcha. so i recommend it and also on this note apparently i read a lot of these kind of books <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was originally going to talk tonight about mary roach Yes, oh, because yeah. she pulls me into science so much. Yeah, she's good. But then I'm like, oh, she. I mean, I think she thinks like a scientist. That's why it's so well presented. But she yeah. is a writer, so I changed it up. Gotcha. Um, but her book, Stiff, it talks about the yeah, body farm. Stiff, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. about how like sometimes when you donate your bodies, it goes um, to do a crash tests. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that one I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, science, I guess. Yeah, still the science. body farm. <laughs> it's still science, yeah. Oh, what else? It's Saving so millions of people's lives in a Volvo. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I 100% will donate my organs and donate to science. Yeah. And my strict rules are that's the only people that get me. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I'm See? not going to a funeral home. We're not embal- embalming anything. We definitely go. are not doing any kind of viewing. Uh, I'm putting this out here in the podcast mm-hmm. world, so See, my exactly. wishes are respected. Can we still do like a party, like a celebration yeah, of life? Yeah. Party? I'm not going to be there. I'm Sweet. dead. There you go. Yeah, but well, she'll be there. I mean, <laughs> she'll be haunting my ass. I grew up in a family also, vice versa. That didn't like do that stuff, so it seems a little strange to me because I didn't grow up with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but I also am like, well, I'm gone, so whatever my surviving descendants right. want and make them feel better. Yeah, yeah. There is that. if it's therapy for them, if it makes if it's closure <laughs> for them, it's like, what do you need to do? But yeah, Josh yeah. is trying to play big old jet airliner <laughs> at my funeral. He says it's my song. We have been arguing over this for 20 years. That is not my song. <laughs> that should not be played at my funeral. Well, I, I have just... no personal attachment to big old jet airliner. But he does. He does, so I'm playing it at his. <laughs> Maybe that's what he really wants. I think so. And he keeps arguing with you so you won't forget. Done. <laughs> <laughs> so that would wait. be a clever tactic. Okay, so we can do a party. You know what? That would be yeah. very psychological. It would be. And my one cool thing <gasps> is about a lady from oh, psychology. Oh, oh, look at yeah. that. It's yep. like it was <laughs> scripted. It wasn't this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just smooth. Smooth. <laughs> Apple Rita. That song also cannot play at my funeral, Josh, if you are listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm fascinated by any woman that's involved in science. Yes. It's just so intriguing Mm -hmm. but i will say i've always been particularly interested in people studying um the mind yeah and in psychology yeah Mm -hmm. brain science psychology all of that is really my wheelhouse yes (laughs) beautiful so um i was kind of looking for some of the most influential women in psychology that i Mm -hmm. might share with you guys and one name i immediately saw was like yes i learned about her in my child development class at ball state and that's Mary Ainsworth. Oh. Have you guys heard of her? No. I might have like seen her name in print, I bet you but, have. but like maybe just like on a list of like the research of and it's mm-hmm. like, so I have no real yeah, um, ground. Her, her biggest claim to fame, besides having like a mega long career, Pride and Joy, I think her gotcha. career. Oh. I don't want to say Pride and Joy, but like it was her focus in life. Right, gotcha. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, priority. In her priority. <laughs> um and the the impact it made on child development because what she talked about was the attachment theory. Oh, 
very um, cool. She was the one that made a big push and a big difference for like feeding your baby on demand. Gotcha. Mm. By forming the attachment there and not setting to a schedule by, you know, responding to your infant and creating that bond. Oh. Um, she did a lot of research on how that affected how you could attach with people later on in life. Interesting. So it's not just about the children or the babies, but it's showing like those early, early experiences, how they kind of shape who you become as a person. Oh, which is pretty neat. fascinating. That's so, cool. Dun, dun, dun. Anyways, a little background on Mary. Yeah. Um, she is an American Canadian. Oh. Mm-hmm. She was born in Ohio. So right here in the Midwest, like us, but moved to Canada when she turned five. Like you do. Like you do. <laughs> <laughs> like she did. Right. Yeah. Um, she like moved- I've thought about. <laughs> <Right>. No kidding. <laughs> but yeah. Well, she moved there um, because of her father's job. Okay. Um, he- Not because of the president. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Maybe. Well, she was born in 1913. Okay. Who was in the White House then? Oh fuck. Uh, right. I don't know. Either. Before my first ladies. I might. I could put That'd it in be the show notes. Harding. Or- would it? Because you, weren't you guys like back to back? I thought, but see, like my dude she was only four years. Uh, oh. My dude died in 21. So I think it was like 19. Siri yeah, was president exactly. in 1913. Mine was in the office. Oh, have Siri. During <laughs> I thought you were legitimately <laughs> checking. 17, 19. It was Richard Wilson. So um, Wilson. Wilson. 1913 uh, anyway. to 1921. <laughs> there you go. She went because of her father's job, but you know. Okay, but could now, have been political pressure. Now we've got Wilson. Yes. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> he did get all strokey in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> so her father possessed a master's degree in history. Her oh. mom was trained as a nurse. Um, however, she was a homemaker. Um, because she had three babies. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. There you Mary go. and her and it two was sisters. The 1900s. Yeah. This is true. It was 1913. So you know, like you do. Still the <laughs> still the typicals at that time for some. Yeah. Um. So her both of her parents placed a high level of um, importance on having an education. Mm-hmm. So she l- learned to read at a very early age. Um, her family took weekly library tricks trips where her mother would choose an appropriate book for her oh mm. i mean i was like yeah and then i was like oh because <laughs> choice in a library is amazing right <laughs> maybe it wasn't i mean there weren't like any italics or quotes around that so maybe right. i'm reading into it but it did say her mom would choose appropriate <laughs> books for her right She's so. like, I would like this encyclopedia. <laughs> and the mom's like, you know, hold on. <laughs> well, maybe her mom was right because my kid went to the book fair this week. Yeah. And he just bought the books that included gyms and whistles and dinosaur bones. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, do we care what this says? First or just that it bones. has plastic things, and a pouch yep. attached to it? It's an activity book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Love it. Um, but maybe that that was true that her mom was a bit of a stern lady um because it's reported that she was really close to her father but not to her mother gotcha um her dad was the one that tucked her in at night um would sing to her really kind of that nurturer gotcha. um, and she didn't have that warm relationship with her mom um she said that she thought that her relationship with her mom was marked by jealousy Oh, yeah. And that her mom would interfere uh, with her relationship with her dad. So. That did happen. And especially hmm. if she becomes a uh, child development like you're leaning towards. I can yeah. see You see where I'm drawing these lines, <laughs> too? She's like, I'm going to examine my own childhood. Yeah. And a lot of <laughs> her. This works. Right? right. Exactly. A lot of her research did focus on that mother-child bond, too. Yeah. So interesting. Hmm. But, it's, uh, but it's very interesting because she didn't feel like she had it and so she wanted to help others at least be able to identify what Mm -hmm. she felt was lacking and Mm -hmm. so that's taking her pain and doing it for positivity but keep going (laughs) although she did get some critics talking about her research being too focused on the mother yeah that we should be exploring other caregivers that a child could become attached to right such as perhaps their father perhaps my favorite thing is this whole theory that people talk about dads babysitting their kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just taking the kid out for a spank. Like, I know, right? Exactly. Oh, anyway, that's a side note. <laughs> so because she was such a passionate reader, um, she would eventually read A Character in the Conduct of Life, which is written by William McDowell. Gotcha. McDougall. 
One of the two. Yeah. 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 I think they co-wrote it. Okay. Gotcha. I'm just going to give all kinds of false information <laughs> in this podcast tonight. Written by some. Well, like, check this. What, like, Wikipedia doesn't? <laughs> yes, exactly. We'll figure I'm it out. I'm definitely not notes. reading off a Wikipedia page. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so she... Obviously, a highly intelligent woman. Um, she began her college career at 16 years old. Oh, wow. Whoa. At the University nice. of Toronto. Yeah. Ah. Um, and she would actually stay there through all of her education. She got her master's degree and then finally her doctorate in psychology from the University of Toronto. Oh, sweet. Yes. Um, all of her degrees were in psychology. Um, her dissertation was titled An Evaluation of Adjustment Based on the Concept of Security. Oh, hmm. all right. So very from the like start of her research paper, but I mean, okay, I get it, I get it. I mean, I think that when you write an academic paper, you have to think of the most boring words you can string <laughs> together to fully that's, illustrate this that's and the maximum syllable. Yeah, <laughs> ideally, that's yeah. totally a word. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the point of her research was showing that in a family where the security is lacking an individual will be handicapped by a lack of a secure base from which to work. I mean, that sounds science-y. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And this sounds relatable, right? Like, it if does. you don't have that security, yeah. um, how are you able to go out into the world mm-hmm. and explore and learn? It's like a solid foundation. Yes. Yeah. You need your solid foundation. So that's, gotcha. I think, what her dissertation was about. So after she graduated, she had a job interview at a different college, mm-hmm. Um, and when asked about um, if she faced discrimination in her career being a woman in this um, early 1900s, um, she said the only time she knows of is when she went and interviewed at a college and they loved her because she, she's so bright and smart and intelligent and they offered her a job um, and then they had to rescind, descend, rescind. 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 Yeah, something like yes, that. Yes, there you go. That sounds yeah. right. You can tell I'm not writing the- a dissertation, people. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> rescind. <laughs> The offer because um, their what is it like their board um, wouldn't wouldn't approve it, her wouldn't approve it oh. because she's a woman right specifically mm. said she's a woman back then you could just be like well she's a woman so no it's right that's girl? like Elizabeth Why Elizabeth Blackwell right girl. right like Elizabeth Blackwell applied to for a medical school. They thought she was joking Mm -hmm. and said, yeah, sure, you can come and didn't expect her to show up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And she did. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, somebody's like, yeah, no, 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 we'll offer it to her. And then the woman will turn it down. And it's like, oh, oh, she's not turning it down. We need to (laughs) resend the offer. We didn't mean it. We were sorry. Right, exactly. (laughs) We thought you wouldn't take us up on the thing we don't want you to do. How could you possibly think we were serious? (laughs) Outrageous. Um, so shortly after that, she joined actually the, what do they call it in Canada? Canadian Women's Army Corps. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. In 1942. I wonder why. I think it's a, a little mm. bit of a war yeah, that was it happening could be right around those She times. joined up because the war. Look at that. The big one. The second big the one. The second, second big one. <laughs> Um, So during her time there, she really served as more um, of an examiner, giving tests out and evaluating people. Um, She was promoted because she's brilliant, right? And she became an advisor to the director of personnel selection of the Canadian Women's Army Corps. Ah. And she was able to uh, reach the rank of major before she left. Oh, there you go. So she spent five years. No, three years. Gotcha. Something like that. Sweet. Three, five. Do winter time for the war effort. <laughs> she did. And after that, she returned um, to the University of Toronto, her home base, um, gotcha. and began working for them. Cool. Yes. And it was while she was teaching um, about personality, actually, personality psychology at Toronto, that she oh. met her future husband. Um, and I need to back up because i forgot something cool (laughs) when she was there working she also worked on a revision of the rorschach test oh yeah the rorschach test yeah like you ink blot and it's what do you see rorschach test (laughs) i just want to throw that out there because i feel like a lot of people can recognize that even if you're not into Mm -hmm. psychology Mm -hmm. you're like oh i did i know what that is yes she did some work on that right pop culture reference every now and again now so yeah 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 so, Watchmen, wait. <laughs> I know, right? And a whole character in some comics. 
<laughs> Back to the comic book. I know. I can't win with you guys. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is winning. <laughs> Actually, it is. You're right. Uh, All right, guys. It sucks you in. <laughs> not opposed. Just not very knowledgeable. We can help you, Katie. <laughs> we know the way. <laughs> So Mary found her way to London after no. getting married. London! She did. Um, her husband was actually working on his master's when they met and then was going on to work at his doctorate in London. Cool. Um, and she was able to secure a position at a clinic there. Nice. And that clinic had a focus on that attachment um, psychology oh. and um, developing that. So she was able to continue to work, I think, on what was her passion project. Right, 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 right. In that setting. Cool. And then even cooler yes. is they eventually sp- ended up spending some time in Uganda. Oh. Mm. And it was while she was in Uganda that she was able to do um, like a natural study. Oh, I'm trying okay. to find what time frame are we talking now? Because were we talking like fifties at this point? Fifties, sixties, seventies? Not yet. 70s? Not yet? Not okay. Yet. All right, gotcha. Um, it was just after the war. Okay, we are talking about the nineteen fifties. J.K. Okay, got it. Okay, <laughs> yeah. there you go. Yep. Oh, neat. Um, okay, cool. So it was in nineteen fifty that they moved to London, and then shortly after that, they went to Uganda, hmm. and she was able to do her naturalistic study on attachment between an infant and a mother, and what she chose to research was. Um, this custom they had of when it was time for the baby to wean and stop breastfeeding, they would just uh, take the infant to a family member's house Mm -hmm. for several days at a time Mm -hmm. so it could forget the breast. Oh, okay, Mm -hmm. gotcha. An out of sight, out of mind kind of scenario, but yet still being taken care of by family. Yes. Interesting. It is. Interesting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And actually, I'm kind of frustrated. I'm going to have to dig deeper later um, because I'm not sure what she wrote about about her findings oh gotcha. she wrote an entire book about it so ah. and um it was definitely influential in future um studies of attachment styles right so cool. very cool for sure look at that mm-hmm. and shortly after she finished that study they made their way back to the united states her and her husband mm-hmm. um and then shortly after that they had a really unpleasant divorce oh yeah sad trombone Yes, that was really hard on her, and she um, really suffered a lot of depression during that time. Gotcha. Um, and did a lot of counseling and therapy, which is awesome. Right, exactly. Yes. Highly recommend. Absolutely. Yes. All four. Um, but then she got back to her work, and I think just really put herself into her work. She was never married gotcha. again. Um, she was like, one and done. Gotcha. Get it. <laughs> my work is my life. <laughs> <laughs> Been right. there, done that, got the t-shirt, right. not doing it again. Yeah, fair. Yes. Um, so she s- worked for a long period of time for uh, John Hopkins oh, University. John Hopkins! Mm-hmm. Sorry, Henrietta oh, Lacks cool. throw back there. <laughs> but it's thought that during that time, and it was, you know, 1960s, okay, gotcha. that she did not receive proper treatment considering her skills and her expertise level. That also sounds she fair. She had a lot of experience, yeah. Um, but she was also a woman. Right. And this was John Hopkins at a very yes. interesting time in John Hopkins yes. history. So Yeah, she had to wait two years to become an associate uh, professor. Okay. And even though she was like overly qualified for that mm-hmm. position. Right, 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 right. Yes. Um, and it was really hard for women at that time to be considered for those positions because they had to dine in a separate woman women's hall. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so she wasn't able to meet uh, male department heads mm-hmm. because you couldn't she couldn't for sit the down. Job. Yeah, you couldn't network because you were separated from. Yeah. Half it's half almost the involved. out of sight, out of mind scenario all over again. Oh, <laughs> girls need to forget the breast, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, um, I want to get to the part that everybody's going to recognize her from because I know I'm kind of just like going through every little bit, but she is gotcha. an interesting woman. And then she met Freud. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know that I know that's right. not coming, but it would have been hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so she is most famous for this study she did in 1965, which is called the Strange Situation. Ooh. And when I talk about it, you guys might recognize it. You might have heard about it before. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it's not an escape room situation. Okay. No, strange. just a strange. Yeah, it's just situation. a strange situation. Okay. <laughs> so if you're an infant, okay, and you're in a room with your mom, and a stranger yeah. comes in and wants to meet you, yeah. 
that's strange, man. Uh, right? Yeah. They have right. all these yeah. toys. Yeah. They okay. have all those yeah. toys in there, and yeah. the person comes in and starts playing with the baby. Yeah. And then the, the mother leaves. <gasps> no! Right? Dun, 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 dun. The world ends for that baby. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Oh no! It's um, a silent cry followed by a full-grown cry, right? Followed by yes. nightmares for the rest of their lives. <laughs> some of the baby, because they typed the reaction of the babies, and some of the baby types they actually couldn't continue with the study um, because it wouldn't be like ethical or humane right. because the baby was like that upset. So. Right? Um, they tested it in three different ways um, and had different like ways they would do it and different yeah. time lengths and all of that gotcha. but from that study she came up with the idea of there being three attachment styles ah okay the ancient avoided insecure attachment okay um and that's one where the infant's kind of already ignoring its caregiver oh kind of already doesn't give a shit about mom okay all right yeah i mean they come in and observe that yeah. that baby is kind of like whatevs cool yes and they didn't um exhibit any distress when the parent left because they don't have attachment to See <laughs> anything. So it's like, my name's Paul and this is between y'all. Right. So. All right cool. And they typically ignored their caregiver when their caregiver returned to the room. Yeah. Go <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's cool, Mom. Neat. <laughs> um, so they theorized that the apparently unruffled behavior of the avoidant infants is, in fact, a mask for distress. Oh, and that was just their hypothesis. But cool enough, a later study um, was able to get more in depth, and they studied the heart rate of the avoidant infants. Ooh, and wherever uh, they were able to see through them that the infant was distressed, oh. they weren't just giving the cues for being mm. distressed. So they're like a duck. Because this is my favorite mm -hmm. analysis. A duck is calm on the surface and paddling like hell underneath. And that's mm -hmm. how I describe my life. <laughs> right. Is that I seem like, I got this, I got this. And then inside, I'm texting Katie and Bonnie going, what the fuck? <laughs> and freaking out inside. So they're freaking out inside. But like to yeah. outward appearances, it's like, I don't care. It's right. totally fine. I'm fine. fine. I'm just dying inside. This is so fun. <laughs> Interesting. I'm glad that they looked at the heart rate to figure out is what's showing. Oh, yeah. neat. That's why science is so cool. <laughs> I think I understand my husband better now. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And then we have what we all hope for. <laughs> yes. Secure attachment. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see what I don't have. What is it? <laughs> um, these are the children who are securely attached to its mother um, it was able to freely explore okay. when the caregiver was present using a, the mom as like a safe base. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Come back to mom. If something's distressing. Explore out. Okay. Um, and so the child would engage with the stranger when the caregiver is present. Okay. And they'll be visibly upset when the caregiver departs. Okay. But happy to see the caregiver on his or her return. I feel like this sounds like my kids. Mm hmm. But Good, then again. Right? Uh, nepotism and I've got a little bit of a bias <laughs> well, they, at the time of this study they claimed yeah. that 70% um, of middle class babies okay. were securely attached oh. style so and that is a, another like critical uh, feedback on the right. study is they You're didn't looking at generalize class. it to any other populations it was like right. mm -hmm. it's middle class babies coming okay. in gotcha so then there's anxious, anxious, resistant, insecure attachment. Ding, ding, ding. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> what Chil is it? Children <laughs> classified as anxious, ambivalent, slash resistant showed distress even before separation <laughs> and were clingy and difficult to comfort on caregiver's return. Yes. They either showed signs of resentment in response to the absence yes. or signs of helpless passivity. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a lot of therapy though. Yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> as long as I recognize and then work on it. Base. Exactly. That's right. Yes. I need to get back to my safe base. <laughs> that is you neat. Can maybe create other safe bases, I think. You do. You do. <laughs> um, and then I believe, yes, the last one gotcha. is the disorgan well, this is a new one. Oh, okay. Um, this came after her yes, research. It was okay. one of her proteges that came up with this. Uh -huh. And she okayed it, but she was a little bit leery. Because she thought maybe it would kind of ruin the distinctions between the categories that too many people would fall into this. Gotcha. I believe from my extensive sometimes, reading. But sometimes like <laughs> a, a shade of gray is good though. Right. You know? So. Yeah. So the fourth category was added by Mary Main, another okay. woman. Mm. Another Mary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> another Mary. There's something about Mary. <laughs> oh, man. 
<laughs> slid that one right in I there. I really did. <laughs> really did. In contrast to infants in other categories classified by Mary Ainsworth, which possessed a standard path of reaction while dealing with the stress of separation and reunion, type D infants appeared to possess no symptoms of coping me- mechanisms. In oh. fact, these babies um, had mixed features such as strong proximity seeking followed by strong avoidance or appearing dazed and disoriented upon reunion with their caregiver or both. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so those people were all around just kind of stressed out, I think. Yeah. Is but what I they're s- saying. I can see the importance for the for the separate distinction, though. Yeah. Because there could be something else totally happened in there, too. So, ooh. Yeah. But her work definitely had a huge amount of influence on um, parenting books and parenting styles and recommendations. Um, she had many, many awards and um, her own recognitions during her career sweet um let's see the it's like awards. a super long list guys i know right my i swear my lady actually had more awards listed than her bio mm. and i'm like it was longer this seems fair mm-hmm. yeah and then i'm like you seem to focus on one particular area <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to find the one that was like the standout here Yes. It's it's the last listed. Last is best. Yes. Gold Medal Award for Life Achie- Achievement in Science of Psychology, American Psychology Foundation. Ah. So the no. American Psychology Foundations gave her an all-around gold star. Very cool. Look at that. Yes. Gold so star. Super interesting lady. I like I that. don't know, Bonnie, if there's any books on her. Oh, we'll find out. We she, will. I mean, she wrote a book. So that's true. She wrote a, it like a dissertation. Book. Well, not dissertation. Um, well, she wrote, book. she wrote books. Oh, that's she, right. That's right. You did say she did. the book about Uganda. Um, that's right. I was yes. thinking they were all like scientific technical um, papers. Well, looks like there's yeah, three books listed yeah. right there. Oh, um, I was trying to make sure and it was actually a full list. book, but infancy, infancy in Uganda. Okay. Cool. Um, and also child care and the growth of love. Oh. That one's oh. definitely a book written in 1965. Sweet. I like it. Um, and this one, I'm wondering if it's more of a paper. It has several names, but who knows? And it's patterns of attachment. Okay. Gotcha. So. I did like a book. Interesting. Yeah. So it's quite possible. That sounds fun. Yeah. To learn more. Da, yeah. da, da. So I just think that's really interesting because um, both psychology and yeah. especially child psychology are interests mm. of mine. So yeah. I wanted to know a little more about her. It's in your wheelhouse, girl. Absolutely. That's... I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And I didn't... Yeah. Uh, make it too confusing <laughs> no, no no you didn't make it too confusing and i love the the four different types because i'm just like wait a second Which, right <laughs> i should see if she ever came up with like or somebody after her came up with like a quiz so right like, mm, oh, yeah. oh, i'm sure it's a yeah. facebook yeah. quiz Quizzes. yeah <laughs> we'll find it on buzzfeed uh-huh. yeah <laughs> show notes exactly yes mm-hmm. find your attachment style <laughs> we can't promise that it won't like have viruses all up in your computer or anything like that but you know yeah. we can never promise just that. about every like facebook mm-hmm. quiz no i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah, so Sweet. thank you guys well that wraps it up for this week, join us next week as our next gal pal shares her one cool science thing as Gal's Guide to the Galaxy podcast continues. Thanks for listening. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gal's Guide patron today. Thanks for listening. <laughs>